at my own notes. So anyway, <laughs> there you go. Little bonus there. All right. So I'm not super sure why our invitations aren't showing up. But again, I don't think this is an us thing. I think it might be a Zoom thing. Let me go check in with Michelle real quick okay. and I'll come back with sure. the... What is your going to do? all of y'all have a long-term care policy we do okay i kind of figured now ask if we understand yeah i'm guessing you don't and that's why i'm here yeah i yeah. I don't know if everybody else is, but ours, every couple of years, they increase the premiums every year. That's because yeah. you know. yeah. yeah. Well, actually, and we'll talk about this. It, part of the reason is, yeah, because people, they basically made a bad gamble. Are you ready? You're ready. Okay. Okay. We got folks coming in. We managed to sort it out. So yeah. wonderful. Okay. We're going to come back to that, but don't let me forget. Okay. Um. So I'm Robin Flacramosa. I am a care coordinator at Kimbrough Law. I recognize some of you from different presentations that I've done. I will say that I am on the very tail end of a cold. I'm not contagious, but I have this kind of raspy voice. Um, so if you can't hear me, just let me know. I'm very informal. Um, so if you all have questions as we go, just stick your hand up. We'll go ahead. We kind of do a little down the rabbit hole and then we come back to where we're going. Um, but this program is um, about long-term care policies. It's, I call it the idiot's guide to long-term care policies because they are really confusing. Um, so first, Kimber Law is a law firm. We have offices here in Athens and in Gainesville, and we specialize in elder law. So that's making sure you have all your state planning documents. There's a way to protect your assets as you age to keep everything from having to go to the nursing home if, heaven forbid, you end up there. Um, a lot of different things like that. We do the VA. My role in the firm is basically the geriatric social worker or case manager. So Mr. Kimbrough, who started the firm, was recognizing that uh, families were coming in and having their documents done. And then they were like, well, when do I know when it's time for me to move out of my house? Or what do I do with my mom who just got diagnosed with Alzheimer's? And he was like, I'm an attorney. I don't know the answers to those questions. So we kind of take a holistic approach. So I help the attorneys with some of their planning. The clients of ours that have care needs can um, sign up for my services for a year at a time. I am part of the law firm. Um, and I kind of help them work through all of the different aspects of care. What I always tell people, I've been doing this for a long time. I actually got my master's in gerontology and adult education from UGA. Um, but because of the work that I've done, I don't know what day something's going to happen, but I'm familiar enough with the aging process, the disease process. I kind of know where we're going. Um, so the long-term care policies I got really into because a lot of my clients have them and they were having a really hard time accessing them, which is intentional. Um, and <laughs> there is nothing I love more than a good fight when it's for my clients. Um, so I kind of really got into the long-term care policies. I have a couple of friends that I've worked with who are on the other end of it that have kind of helped me. And this is a huge passion of mine. Most of the law firms don't do this, but this kind of became the thing that I really wanted to do. And I've been pretty successful at it. Um, and like I said, I, I'm pretty dogged. I like a good fight. Um, 
Because really the long-term care policy, that is your money. They've been holding it for you. Now it's time for them to give it back to you when you need it. So we're gonna kind of go through the different policies and uh, ask any questions as we go. So what do we mean when we call say long-term care insurance? It's basically a type of individual insurance that steps in when your medical insurance stops. Um, so it's meant to pick up there after, you know, you've kind of had your medical stuff done. Really what it is, is it's to help people pay for care. So you might have um, some kind of chronic illness. You might get Medicare pays for you to go to rehab, but then when you come home, you still need help. So that's where the long-term care insurance policies kind of kick in. So we look at it as care needs. It could be care in your home. It could be care in a community, um, such as assisted living, memory care, skilled nursing care. Um, it's basically, I, I hate this word custodial care, but that's part of it as well, because sometimes people, it could be a physical ailment they have. It could be a cognitive ailment. Um, so basically, it's for people who are chronically ill or disabled to get help. Um, so there's two different types of long-term care insurance. This is the one that I work with the most because I work with this age population, but there are two. There's traditional and then there's hybrid. And I'm going to talk about both of them real briefly. But um, this is the one that I see the most. A lot of people have uh, policies with Genworth, John Hancock, Aetna, you name it. And every policy is different. Even everybody who has a Genworth policy that I've seen can be different. Um, so basically the pluses and minuses of the traditional ones is they tend to be less expensive, or at least they were when you signed up. We talked right before we got started about how the premiums are going up. Um, but you know, they kind of sell you, am I loud enough? They kind of sell you that this is how much it's going to be. And that sounds great when you're 50 and you're working. And then now you're not working and you're still doing okay, but then they keep raising the premiums. Um, but the, the, Pluses and the minuses, the increasing premiums. Um, and these are use it or lose it. Mm -hmm. If you pay into this policy for 20 years and you are healthy and trucking along and then all of a sudden, I don't know, you fall in a sinkhole and you're gone, that money is all gone. That goes to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So the second type, and I personally have not dealt with these a lot. I think these are more coming more popular now um, and so I just haven't seen as many of these, but the hybrid. So basically it's a whole life insurance policy mm -hmm. and you lock in your premium upfront, which is great, especially for those of you that have policies have been watching the premiums go up. Um, and then the money is returned. So it's almost, it's got a death benefit. So if you use a lot of it in care, or if you are like the sinkhole example, you just truck along and you fall into a sinkhole, you've never used this, your family gets a death benefit. The negative is it's a lot more expensive. So your premium may be locked in, but it's a lot more expensive each year for that, okay? So what is, oh, yep. Can you ever change one policy to the other, from traditional to the hybrid? That's a good question. And I don't know the answer. I don't think so. I think you would probably have to buy a new policy because the first policy was set on whatever you had when you bought it. So if you were 60 years old and you were in that good health, but I honestly don't know um, the answer to that. I can try to find out. I love when people ask me questions because I'm like, well, I don't know. Um, so yeah, sorry, I don't know the answer to that, but um, that's a good question. I would think no, um, but possibly. Okay, so what do these policies traditionally cover? It's gonna be care in your home. That's kind of what we were just talking about. Um, it could be personal care. That's gonna be someone who comes in and maybe helps you with the laundry, does your meals, make sure you safely get in and out of the shower. It could be a companion. Um, it could be skilled nursing facility, which is basically a nursing home, uh, assisted living, memory care, um, adult daycare, which is basically a day program for folks with physical and cognitive impairments. They go and spend the day and then they come home. Your home modifications, we're going to talk a little bit more about that because you have to be um, a little bit more uh, careful with that one. And then respite services. So if you're a caregiver and your spouse 
has a cognitive impairment and your grandson is getting married in Arizona and you want to go out there for a week or two, you can put your cognitively impaired spouse in a memory care and assisted living for, you know, two weeks, whatever the, the thing is. And that's considered respite. And then you come home and they come back with you. So you may have this. So one of the things that I say is that you really need, and I'm going to show you these pages that are important in your policy, but you really need to read the definitions of each of your policies mm -hmm. because everything is a little bit different. Um, so just make sure you are reading your policy carefully. And like I said, I'm going to show you where to find some of those things. Um, some of the policies are really interesting because they'll have like, if you're out of the country, it will cover if something happens to you while you're out of the country. Um, I like I'm constantly amazed by the really random, strange things that I'll find in some of these policies. Um, so you just have to really look. So what's not covered? Pretty much stuff that's covered by your health insurance. So prescriptions, medical procedures, doctor's appointments, transportation, although I will say so. When I say transportation is not covered by your long term care policy, they're not going to pay for Uber for you to get to the doctor's appointment. Now they will pay for you to have a home care aid come in your house. And if you work it out with that agency, that aid may be able to drive you places. And the long-term care insurance company will pay for her hours to take you places. But if you are pretty independent, but you just aren't driving anymore, long-term care insurance isn't gonna help you with that. And they don't really pay for equipment like walkers, wheelchairs. A lot of that is covered by your insurance, Medicare, those kind of things. So where do you find the answers? How do you read your policy? There's a lot of the policy, and I work for a lawyer, that's just a bunch of goobly gob. You don't need to know it. So this is an actual policy um, from one of my clients. So some of these pages are pages that I actually took out of their policy. This is kind of um, the money shop. This is what you're gonna wanna look for when you go in there. And a lot of times it's in the front of your policy. Now, one of the first things, and I'll probably say this again, but the first thing that I tell my clients when they are looking at their long-term care policy is to call and ask for the most updated policy. The reason for that is if you got this policy when you were 60 or 50, and now it's 20 years later. And I actually had a client, you know, remember how they used to do the wheels? They would roll them up and stick them in that sleeve. He had this policy that he got, I think in like 1995 and he pulled it out and I was like, okay, we got to get an updated one. That's great. But you want the most updated one because that's going to have the most um, updated definitions of what services are they going to cover? It's going to have the most updated pieces here. These are the important pieces and I'm going to explain what they are. But so the first thing, and even if you don't need care yet, but you haven't done in a while is to call your insurance company and ask for an updated policy. Okay. Can they take out stuff that you initially contracted for? I beg your no, they can't okay. adjust your policies. So a lot of what I'll see from one policy to the other is where the definitions have just, because like, so memory care wasn't a separate distinct uh, community back 20 years ago. So some of the original policies will say, oh, we'll cover assisted living and nursing home, but it doesn't specifically say memory care because that didn't exist. Then. Um, so no, you they can't take anything out of your policy, but you want to just look at really look at your definitions. Um, so these are the most important, this is kind of the nitty gritty of what you have. So elimination days, you're going to have a set amount of days that you have to pay out of pocket before the policy starts paying. And I'm going to explain a lot more about that and ways around that in a few slides from now. Yes. What about Medicare? Does it start paying it on day one? So Medicare, remember Medicare is short term. Medicare's job when it was created was to get you better to go back to work. So Medicare is very short term. Um, and it's usually if you have an injury or you break something, you go to rehab, Medicare is going to pay your first 20 days. And then, so, yes, yes. So say you're at rehab, Medicare is going to pay your first 20 days there while you're, as long as you're getting therapy and you're making progress. And you stay, but you have to stay overnight. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and there's a 
And, and Medicare is its own rabbit hole to go down. <laughs> Um, but basically to kind of do the short answer is Medicare usually pays a set amount of 20 days. So just, we'll use the example that you're in a rehab facility because you had your hip replaced and you're there for therapy to build up your strength so you can go back home. So Medicare is going to cover the first 20 days, then days 20 to 80, you may have a copay. And where it gets complicated is going to be what kind of advantage plan do you have? Do you have other supplemental insurance? But basically, after 100 days, Medicare is not going to pay anything. So say you break your hip, you go to rehab, you work your little heart out, but unfortunately, you are just not strong enough to go home. And it's day 101. Now you're paying for long-term care. You're paying for the nursing home. Does that kind of answer your question? Yes. And But I will say, and we're going to come back to this. Some of these Medicare days, like if you're getting therapy at home, sometimes you can count those for your elimination days. We're going to come back to that. Um, but this is, I think a lot of people think Medicare pays for a lot more than it does. And then they're unpleasantly surprised. So this is where these policies really kind of step into that kind of void. Because Medicare, when Medicare was created, people weren't living as long as they are now. Um, and so it was always meant to be a short term, get you back up on your feet and back to work or back home. So if the elimination period on that policy is 50 days, that means Medicare would pay for the first 20? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it depends. Okay, so the question was the elimination days. We're going to come back to that. If you'll hold that, and if I don't answer that when we get to the slide about elimination days, let me know. But pretty much assume that you are stuck with the bill for 50 days, okay? That's how the long-term care policy looks at it. I'm gonna explain ways to work around that, but the long-term care policy says, I don't care what's wrong with you, you're gonna pay out of pocket for 50 days before you'll be eligible to start getting paid. And then this is like the daily maximum benefit. This is another reason why I say it's important to get a new policy, an updated policy statement, because if you have inflation protection, so like this particular gentleman started, this is the 1990 something policy uh, that he got, had, the original, he had a hundred days, but he had an inflation compound, which compounded by 5%. So now his actual maximum daily benefit when I started working with him last year was $355. But if we hadn't gotten that new policy, we wouldn't have known that. And there's a huge difference between $100 a day and $350 a day, okay? And then this is the maximum lifetime benefit. So this is the total pot of money he has to use. And once it's gone, it's gone. They don't care if you live another 10 years. And does that go up? Like with that compounded inflation or could it? Depending it on depends on your policy, policy okay. whether this increases or not. It usually doesn't. But it depends on when you get those premium increases, which route you get. Yeah. Okay, and then the rest of this is just your premium. You probably know how much your premium is, uh, but that's kind of, and you'll find this page usually fairly early in your policy. Sometimes it's like the sec first or second page. And this is, this is the money page. This is what you want to know, okay? This is another important page. So usually you'll, you'll have your little cover sheet. You may have that statement that I was just showing this one. And then the next three to five pages is HIPAA stuff, blah, 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 skip all that. That doesn't really matter. That's all legal talk. And then you're going to come to like the policy features. So I've said important pages. That's not how it's going to be in your policy, but it'll say policy features. Now, your policy may have a lot more of these. I picked the ones that are really relevant because some of the things that they put in there, you may or may not ever use. Um, this will be like some of them will be really long. This will be like where, you know, out of the country benefit and all of those kind of things, which I don't know why I think is so funny, because if you're at the point where you're getting a long term care insurance policy, you're probably not going out of the country on a regular basis anymore. Um, but and we're going to talk about what some of these things mean. But you want to look because they'll say included or not included. Or if your page is like this one that just says included. Assume if it's not on this list, you don't have it, okay? And then again, it talks about your coverage limits. But again, remember, 
this in your policy is going to be outdated. So you want, that's why you want that newer policy. And then this just kind of explains um, the automatic compound benefit. Now you want to look because um, this client from this page did not have it because it would have said they list it here, but you really need to look at your policy and make sure you have that compound benefit because it'll be listed in there, but you may not have signed into that. Okay, does that make sense? Any questions so far? We're good? Look, I have my notes over here, I always forget. Um, okay, so the other important page is gonna be your glossary. This is where your definitions are, okay? Um, and it's gonna talk about your maximum daily benefit. Now, some of the policies, this gets really a little quirky. Almost all the policies that I've seen have a set maximum daily benefit. I have seen one or two that say it's based on a percentage of whatever the cost in your community is, which means you need to call the long-term care insurance and say, what is my daily maximum benefit for the area where I live? I don't see those as often, but those are a little tricky because then you're reading your policy and you're like, well, I still don't know what my daily benefit is. Um, one of the things to know is that if your spouse, if you are on the same policy, now I've seen this both ways. I've seen separate policies for spouses from the same company. I have seen a joint policy, it's two spouses on one. If you have a joint policy, just know that basically each of you have your own daily benefit and each of you have your own elimination dates. It's not as common, um, but I do have a couple that is on there together. And what that also means is that their, their lifetime maximum benefit is for the two of them. Um, so just make sure. And if you have separate policies, you will know that. Um, so then basically, you know, the maximum life benefit, we've talked about that. Um, elimination days, we're going to come back to this. This is important to read. So these, we call these ADLs, your activities of daily living. Um, and this is basically, and I'm going to talk more about this, but you need to need help with two of these. Just two. Just two. Just two. To be considered eligible. Okay. And... Sometimes, and, and it gets a little tricky because so say someone has a memory impairment and they may still be able to do the, like they may be able to feed themselves and go to the bathroom independently, but they have to have somebody there to fix their meal or to remind them, hey, this is the way to the bathroom. So just know that the memory impairment um, still needs these, but it's more of a watchful oversight. Does that make sense? So I have memory impaired people who, if I show them, oh, let's go to the bathroom, it's down the hall, they can go to the bathroom independently. But if I'm not there reminding them to go, they won't, they won't be able to find it. Um, so, but this is pretty much now, excuse me, the reason I say to make sure you read your policy is I found an old policy, which only had five of these. Um, it did not include transferring. So that was something different that we needed to look at. Most of the policies have all six of these. Yes, sir. Uh, would it help to go back to the ad? Would it help to go back to the places that you have to back to get for rehab? See, they let you pay a good policy, comes $100 a day. If you went and found out that they charge $120 a day, that will kind of help you save up for it. Mm -hmm. That would be a good idea. Yeah. So, and we're going to talk about a little bit about that. So, yes, you if you know that you have $100 a day, when you talk to a home care agency, you're going to want to, especially if $100 is, is really what you can afford, you know, um, without dipping, you're going to want to say to the home care agency, how much, how many hours will $100 a day get me? Um now, yeah, and they won't let you, a lot of these policies, when they say there's a maximum $100 a day, and this is where you really want to look, because I have seen one that said you had a weekly benefit. And so what that client did was they took their $700 that they got, they got $100 a day for seven days, but it was just a weekly benefit. So then they just had longer care days. Most of the policies are $100 a day. 
So they don't care if you need eight hours of help a day. They're only going to pay $100. The rest is going to be on you. So yes, you're right. There are things you can do to make sure that you're making the maximum of this and the minimum coming out of your own pocket. But again, you really have to read your individual Yes, policy. yes. Um, and, I, and in case I forget to mention this, I do do reviews of people's policies for them. Um, and uh, there is a cost associated with that. I'll talk about that at the end. But in case I forget, that is one of the things that I do. And then I have a friend who, if I get stuck, he's been doing this a lot longer. He looks at them with me to make sure that I'm giving you all the right information. And then I type everything up and I kind of give you the like, this is how it works. Okay. More important pages. Your table of contacts, your index of defined terms. This is usually in the beginning of your policy. Okay. And what I tell people is what you're looking for, like if you are interested in respite care, go to page 12. Don't bother trying to read all the other mobile, you know, mumbo jumbo if you're interested in respite care, because you will get, it can get overwhelming. I look at these policies pretty regularly, and I think they're anywhere probably from 20 to 35, 40 pages. And there's probably, when I go to like, these are the important pages, there's six. <laughs> maybe four, maybe eight. So a lot of it is just words, okay? So- Which is a care exactly, maybe. I'm sorry? Respite. So respite is going to be usually in a community, but not always, but basically it's a break for the caregiver. So that's oh. that example that I used earlier. Yeah, and I'm gonna talk about some of these definitions. I know I'm glossing over some of these things, but we will talk about some of these. Don't too large. Um, yeah, <laughs> but I usually tell people like, don't get overwhelmed by your policy, go to your table of contacts and look at what you wanna look at. So like you wanna look at activities of daily living. You wanna read that and see what falls under that. Um, your home care benefit. This is going to be if you want someone to come in your home. I mean, let's face it, everybody wants to stay at home. Um, so what do you need for that? Um, and then, but I mean, I have seen some of these quite lengthy and a lot of the, the words or the definitions aren't anything that you really are going to be focused on. Okay, so elimination days. Excuse me. This is what I said, where you have a certain amount of days that you have to be paid for. You have to pay out of pocket. So the way these policies work is you are ill and you need some help. So you're, there's a lot of paperwork that goes along with this, and we're going to talk about that, too. But you're basically going to have to have a healthcare provider say, yes, you have this chronic or chronic chronic illness that you need assistance with. OK. And so they're going to have to do like a care plan or basically fill out some medical forms saying, you know, they're, they're not going to just take your word for it. They're, you know, obviously the doctor and the nurse practitioner or whoever your provider is, um, is going to have to fill out some paper saying, yes, they meet these requirements. They need help fixing meals and bathing. Um, so then you have to meet your elimination days <laughs> and that's set by the policy. So you just want to look at that. Now, so that just imagine a lot elimination days are days you have to pay out of pocket or days that you have to you have to meet those days before the policy is going to pay for you. They usually don't have to be consecutive. They can be over a long period of time. So the client who one of my clients, he and his wife are on a policy together and they are pretty financially limited. So they were basically paying an aid four hours a day, one day a week for three months to meet their elimination days because that was all they could afford. And yes, it took a while. And then we were able to hobble together some of the Medicare days that we're gonna talk about, but that was how they did it. Now you can do them all at one time. Um, so some companies will let you count days that you get physical therapy. Okay, so this particular client um, is a gentleman. He had a fall. He was in rehab. He went home. Physical therapy was coming out. Occupational therapy was coming out. We added those days to the day a week that he was paying for the home care aid. Now, did he pay for those for therapy? No. Medicare paid for that, but they let us count those as days. So you all say specifically a policy. Is that sort of just one of those kind of things you have to negotiate? Um, so it doesn't say specifically in your policy. Mm -hmm. 
I have done three people who had Medicare therapy and they counted them. Um, but I can't promise that that's always the case. Um, but I've been pretty lucky with that. So they won't. Now, if you're in rehab where we were talking about, you know, the certain amount of days, they're not going to count the rehab days because that's considered a custodial care. So you had to stay there. But when you go home and you have physical therapy coming out to your house, you can count those days. Now, here's and I'm going to skip over to this because this is important. So only one day of service or only one service per day counts. So where this became important for my client was he was getting physical therapy and occupational therapy and an aid. And we made sure that they all came out on different days. So the aid came out once a week, physical therapy came out once a week, and occupational therapy came out once a week, all on different days, which meant he got three days toward his elimination every week. He only paid for one of those. He had to pay for the aid. Um, but that is important. So you need to be staggering your stuff out um, if you can. Mm -hmm. And then usually you only have to satisfy an elimination period one time in your mm -hmm. lifetime. So say you have this broken hip, you go to therapy, you come home, you get therapy at home, you need an aid to help you. Six months goes by, you've been getting long-term care insurance, and then you are better and you no longer need any help then you go off, you, you're no longer getting your payments from this long-term care insurance because you don't need help. But then another year later, you fall and break your other hip. You've already met your elimination days. So you don't have to do that again. Okay. You've already said the elimination days are cumulative. 10 in one year, 10 in another year, 10 in another year. Is that cumulative? Now, I'm not sure how long the time is. Um, they let, I think it has to be within a year. Um, but I honestly don't know the answer. Now, my particular client, the gentleman that I was talking about, we went back to January or February to August. We covered that span and they accepted all of those days. Now, I will not say it was not without a fight but we did get them to accept all those days. Um, but yeah, if you, but the thing is, is the way these policies are set up more than likely, once you start getting services, it's because you're frail and you're probably not necessarily going to get better. Did you have questions? No, uh, there's nothing you about the 50 days. If you have a policy, you say, I don't want the 50 days, I won't kicking in after 10 days, that positive higher? Yes, yeah, usually, yeah, usually the lower your elimination days, the higher your premium. Now, to make things even a little more complicated, some of the elimination days, it said 50 days on that thing, but that only was for long-term care. So he actually only had 30 days that he had to meet to get home care in his home. Mm. Um, so it gets a little complicated and, but I will say, so when you call, um, and I'll talk about this too, you'll have a list of questions. And that's one of the things I usually ask the people who answer the phones, they're going to pull your policy up and they're going to have that information. And they're usually pretty spot on. Um, and they usually can try to answer your questions. So a lot of times, like all of y'all are going to go home and call your long-term care insurance policy and you're going to have an updated information. Um, but that one surprised me because we were looking toward having to meet 50 days and all of a sudden they were like, oh, he's approved. And I was like, I mean, yay, but we didn't meet 50 days. And that was how we found out that he had a 30 day home care policy. And I think some of that may be regulated by what's required of the state. Mm -hmm. I'm not really sure. Is, is there usually a specified dispute resolution, resolution procedure in yes. the policy? They have all of the ways, like they have um, a whole dispute section and it will tell you how to do this. It may or may not be in your actual policy. It'll say something in there, but I, and, and we're gonna talk about, I keep saying we're gonna talk about it, but I do everything online. 
And I recognize some people are not super computer savvy. Get a grandson, pay a neighbor, <laughs> do it online because then you have a paper trail that they cannot deny. So I had a client when I ran the day center, she was caring for her husband who had cognitive impairment, was not the easiest person to manage. And the way these policies work is that you pay for the service and they reimburse you. Well, she couldn't get reimbursed. I was the director of the center. I was every month spent sending 42 pages of documentation that they wanted. And they kept telling me, oh, well, we didn't get pages 25 to 28. So we couldn't pay it. Well, I send my faxes through the email. So I know you're getting every one of them. So I got so frustrated with this company that literally we had a procedure where at the first of each month, I had a particular person that I would call and I would be like, I'm getting ready to hit send. <laughs> and I'm going to stay on here while you print every one of those 42 pages and count them. And suddenly she magically started getting reimbursed. Okay. So they're not all that way. But that particular, that's really where I got started because here's this poor lady caring for her very aggressive, cognitively impaired husband. And it's not like she's trying to get a lot of money back. I mean, she's trying to get $400. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of what got me started. Okay, so you want to do this the cheapest way possible. And here's some numbers for you. Let's, let me see if I can um, look here. So if you have 50 days, elimination days, you're going to do home care, we're going to say is $25 an hour, four hours a day, right? So that's $100. Oh, I don't know if I can get in here. Um, I was going to see if I could scroll my numbers. So that's about $5,000 a, a month or $5,000 to make your 50 days. Okay. Does that make sense? Your assisted livings are probably about, sorry, y'all. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to look at my little notes that I had talked about here. Here we go. Okay, so 50, day, so 50 days of home care, $25, four hours a day. It's gonna cost you $5,000 to make that 50 days. 50 days of assisted living at $180 a day is gonna cost you basically, oh, let's see. I can't do the math. And I can't see. Yeah. Hang on. I got the actual numbers because I made sure I put it on here. Here we go. So that's going to cost you about $5,400, which is going to be a month, which is $9,000. Can I just get a clarification? So there is a stated time period, but since you can get credit for individual services, there's actually a, a monetary sum that you have to achieve, or am I misunderstanding? So I think what you're asking, I'm going to answer it. And if I don't get it right. So you're, you have 50 days of elimination. They don't care how you meet those 50 days. Okay. It's just 50 days of service that you have to pay for. What I'm trying to show you is if you plan ahead, you can save a lot more. There's not a set amount of money. They're just saying you need 50 days of service. But what I see is people who are like, I don't want to start using my policy yet. I want to sit on it. I want to wait. And then they move it. Then suddenly something happens and they now have to go to assisted living. Okay. They didn't ever use their policy before. They have to pay 50 days of assisted living before their policy will start paying. So that costs them $9,000. If they had started with home care, which actually may have also had the benefit of keeping them home longer, because if you get help, when you need it, instead of trying to muster through, you're less likely, you know, to fall trying to carry the groceries in. So if they had started with home care, those 50 days would have cost them five thousand dollars. Let me let me go back. OK. And I apologize. No, nope, that's OK. What constitutes under a typical policy an elimination day? OK, so what constitutes an elimination day depends on your policy. Um, to a certain extent, but it's basically any day of care. And, and when you say day of care, do you mean full day? Is there a certain hour limit? Can it be one hour? Can it be half an hour? Yeah, it doesn't matter how many hours it is. And I think that's what you were asking, like, how do you maximize? Now, I will say home care is cheaper, obviously, than assisted living. 
but home, some of the home care agencies do have a set. They're not usually going to send someone out to your house for an hour. Yeah. So usually you, you would have to say, how what's the minimum hours I can get? Mm -hmm. That one client I was talking about, that was four. Mm -hmm. He had to pay at least four hours. Um, so does that answer your question? The long-term care insurance policy doesn't care how you get those 50 days. If you can get someone to come out to your house for an hour every day for 50 days, that's fine with them. You've met your 50 days. But who certifies that? Yes. How do you make sure? How do you document it? Yeah. Well, so you're going to be working with an agency that's okay. going to have a bill. That's part of, and then they also have a care plan. So when I ran the day center, that client I was talking about, I had to send his attendance. I had to send his nursing care plan we had to do on the regular. I had to send my calendar of events. I had to, I mean, they were ridiculous in what they asked for. But my clients who like are at home getting care, they have a home care agency that all of the home care agencies have to have a reason for why you're getting services. So they have, an, usually you have some, you need some help. The nurse from that agency comes out and says, yes, you do need help, blah, 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 blah. That's your care plan. That's going to go to them. Then you have your aide who comes out uh, three times a week for four hours. You get an invoice from that. That's going to get submitted to the long-term care insurance policy. Because remember, you're paying and then they're getting reimbursed. So could I just ask, so uh, routinely a, a qualifying care provider, the first thing that care providers will routinely do is prepare a care plan. Is that a correct yes. understanding? Yes. And that career um, care plan becomes part of the documentation that you will submit to the insurance provider. Or yes. Carrier. Yes. And uh, all the submissions are made by or in behalf of the patient, not by the provider of the service. It depends. We're going to come to that. But usually, usually you as the person trying to get reimbursed are going to be sending in that paperwork. <laughs> Does that make sense? So usually you are going to be asking the provider, well, the provider is going to be sending you an invoice because you're going to pay the provider. And then you send that invoice showing that you got services. You usually have to request the care plan. And the care plan is usually a state requirement. If, you know, if they're a licensed home care agency in the state of Georgia, they have to have a reason to be serving you. And that's to make sure that they're not coming out to people like who are totally healthy like me and just charging insurance, you know. Oh, usually a nurse said. That's yeah, a nurse does that, a nurse or an LPN. So that's that's how your your healthcare yeah. provider does that. So let's say you are anticipate. I am anticipating uh, a qualifying event. That is, I have the two, and uh, now I'm going to prepare for my elimination dates. Mm -hmm. And I want to be careful to know in advance what my insurance carrier is going to require in terms of documentation. So my question is, to what extent does the insurance carrier actually provide that information to me? Or to what extent do I have to sort of sort through my policy to figure out what I have to get? So are you, when you say your insurance, are you talking about your long-term care insurance? Long-term. Okay. There's, there's a whole process for claims. Yeah. And it'll walk that through there. And we're going to come back to that because I want to keep, you know, I just don't want to run out of time, but you, it will tell you there is a whole claim process that you have to fill out and it'll tell you what you'll need. It's new to you. It's not new to the providers. So it's overwhelming to you, but the providers are like, oh yeah, we know. Yep. Got it. We know exactly what they're going to want. Okay. Um, okay. Robin. Robin. Yes. This is John Barrett. Um, can you can you possibly do risk management as elimination days? As in, okay, if I have a tendency to fall, like I I may go into assisted living to to handle that situation. Would those days count as elimination days? 
Yes. Like, are you, you've moved into assisted living? Any assisted living is automatically going to count because you're, you're going to move into assisted living because you, the presumption is you need some help. Okay. All right. Thank you. So those, yeah. Those automatically count. Now you can also let's, let's go on this assumption. So you know that you're unsteady and you live by yourself. So you have an aide come in for a couple, an hour or two, three times a week, just to be in the house while you take a shower. Mm -hmm. it counts toward your elimination days. Anytime you're paying for care, as long as your doctor or someone would say, yes, you are a fall risk. And yes, we do suggest that you have somebody in the house when you take a shower, whether they're physically there putting hands on you while you're in the shower and helping you, or they're just there for standby assistance. Okay. Um, right. do, do physicians offices routinely know that they need to provide that documentation of the need for that care to the you're going to file a claim and they're going to send you a form that your doctor is going to fill out but then again it's not your doctor who's doing most of this it's whoever your provider agency is whether that's a home care aid assisted living any of those kind of things let me keep going because i know we've got a lot to cover if your spouse is on the same policy again you guys have a joint policy you're both going to have your own elimination days so that couple that I was talking about, and to make things really fun, we got him awarded fairly quickly. Like he, we had no problems. Her was a completely different story. Same policy. Um, but so just kind of know that. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, my little worker's not working anymore. Hang on a second, y'all. Oh, one thing I wanted to finish though when we were talking about. So this is why it's important. Home care, 50 days going to cost you $5,000. 50 days at assisted living is going to cost you $9,000. 50 days at skilled nursing is going to cost you $15,000. So be thinking ahead always. If you get a diagnosis or a chronic illness, um, yeah, my little clicker quits, but I, would, I can just click on there. Um, so just be prepared because if you suddenly fall into a sinkhole and they manage to pull you out and now you have to go to skilled nursing, you're going to have to pay $15,000 out of pocket before the policy will start paying. Okay, so I just want to make sure I hit on that. That's where I started. Okay, nitty gritty details. What do all these different things mean? So I'm going to go through these kind of fast because you're going to want to look at your definition. Privileged care coordination services. So basically, the company pays for someone to manage your care plan and certify you for services and all of those kind of things. If you don't have an agency that will do that, I don't like that because they're paid for by the company. So I take the assumption, I don't know this, but I take the assumption that they are going to be more inclined to say, actually, you're fine. You don't need help. I have no basis for that other than I'm super suspicious. Uh, but that is included and that sounds great until you think of it that way. Um, home care benefit, we kind of talked about that. That's gonna be where the person comes into your house and helps you, respite we talked about. Caregiver training benefit, this to me is another one of those. It looks good, but that doesn't really mean anything. So say you're married and your husband has to get a feeding tube. So the long-term care insurance company will pay for your spouse, who is presumably not a medical person, to learn how to manage your feeding tube so you can go home. Well, that sounds really good, but they're going to do that at the hospital. Um, the doctor's office is going to help you figure that out. But that is what that is there. Equipment benefit. <coughs> um, and this is also kind of like home renovations. You'll see it listed different ways. Um, basically, this is, there are, so, and you need to look at your policy, but there are some policies that have this benefit and you can use this to do something to your home that is going to help you stay home for an addition it has to be at least an additional 90 days nobody really knows but it can't be just to make your house better or more valuable you know increase the sale so if you need a wheelchair ramp you may have funds in your policy for that this couple that i was talking about they both had five thousand dollars of equipment benefit they could not get in and out of their bathroom and their, their bathtub. So they pulled that, those two $5,000 together and renovated their bathroom. And now they have a walk-in shower. Um, so 
you can have things done to your home. I have had another client who, um, which I just think is a blast where they have the chair that goes up the stairs, you know? Um, so they use that. So just know that is a benefit that I think gets overlooked a lot. There may be some equipment. So I have another client who um, has like an indwelling catheter and she has a machine that like keeps it clean and all that. They were paying for those supplies. That can be covered by that because it's helping her stay at home. So that one gets overlooked a lot. Um, Long-term care facility benefit, excuse me, that one um, is usually assisted living, skilled nursing, memory care. Some of the newer policies or, you know, will actually say assisted living and all those things. Some of them still call it long-term care policy um, or long-term care facility. Excuse me, would the equipment benefit still need the elimination period? No. No, I'm glad you asked that. So equipment benefit and respite usually do not need to meet those elimination periods. Mm -hmm. um, and on a total side note, for some reason, if you go on hospice, a lot of times you don't need to meet the elimination days either. Um, and if you're going on hospice, you need to jump on your policy because you want to make sure you get your money out of it. Um, bed reservation benefits. So people a lot of times don't understand that. So that's basically saying if you're living in assisted living and you go to the hospital and you're there for three weeks and then you have to go to rehab for another three weeks, the, they're basically going to keep paying for your assisted living. It's to reserve your bed. Um, waiver of premium. So be sure and look at this. I've seen this in almost all of the policies. Once you start getting, like once you've been determined to be in need and you start getting reimbursements, you don't have to pay your premium. I have seen clients of mine who have paid their premium and then a month later met their elimination days and started getting services and they actually got a refund of some of their premium. As long as you are eligible and getting benefits, you usually don't have to pay a premium. Now, if you, like I had said, you're on it for six months and then you get better and you're no longer receiving payments, then your premium usually will start again. And then some of them have survivorship benefit. So um, if you have that, if you were a married couple when you got your policy, <clears throat> it may include that, which basically means if your spouse dies, you don't have to pay a premium ever again. And I have a client whose husband passed away like 15 years ago, and she is just now starting to use her policy, but she hasn't paid a premium in 15 years. So just look and see, and it's usually fairly easy. You basically call them and let them know you may have to send your spouse's death certificate. But sometimes, and I mean, I hate to sound grim, but sometimes in the midst of the death and all of that, this gets overlooked and they're happy to take your money if you forget to tell them. And, I, I, and on something that says you have to be pay, had paid for 10 years. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there are yeah. some requirements. And I guess I'm going on the assumption that most of you got these policies some time ago. But yes, you have to have paid 10 years and not like basically put in for a policy. So you just have to read your definition. Um, coverage limits, that's kind of, you know, we've already talked about those. Um, it's going to be different for each policy. Um, so what do you do? How do you get started? Okay. And remember, this is a use it or lose it. And I tell my clients, like, wring every penny out of this that you can, because the insurance company, so basically the reason your premiums are going up is there's a lot of different reasons. So Genworth had a huge lawsuit, but people are living longer. They're having to pay out more than they expected, which is probably part of why some of these policies are so hard to access, because they're not making the profits that they thought they were going to. Okay. Um, and I have seen several clients who waited so long. And I understand, I can emphasize, you don't know how, much, how long you're going to live. No one ever feels like they have enough money to live on because you don't know how long you're going to live. But I tell my clients, I'm like, use the policy while you can and enjoy what you can. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may 10 years from now, which I know is easy for me to say. But I have had a client who had a half million dollar policy and he got maybe $3,000 out of it before he died. Mm -hmm. I can't even imagine how much money he paid into that. Um, so that I am huge on, you know, if you, and if you, unless you have a hybrid policy, you're not getting any of this money back. Okay. 
So to me, it's like stick it back to the insurance company. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna you're gonna call them and get your most updated policy. You've probably already done that after this. You're gonna write down any questions that you have when you call. Okay. Um, the important things to note: elimination days. How many elimination days do you have? What's your daily maximum benefit? And what's your lifetime benefit? If you have one, I have one, I have two clients and I, I was like, you have got to start using this policy. They don't have a maximum lifetime benefit. It's as long as they live. And I was like, it took me eight months to talk them into starting to use their policy. Now they won't look back. Um, if there's anyone who may be speaking for you, get a release of information. That could be a child. It could be a spouse. Um, I get those on my clients. Um, it just makes it a lot easier. This is also where it's important when I was talking about doing your things online. So for my clients, probably on a regular basis, I'll have to call. Genworth is usually the one that I have the most problems with. Um, I'll call them. It's all right. It's workable, but you just have to know. But they'll say, oh, I don't see you as an approved person to talk on this person. And I'll say, oh, okay, well, if you look in their documents on March 20th, I submitted the resigned release of information. And on March 25th, it was approved. So I'll wait. Oh, oh, I see it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I get, I work at a law firm, so I make people nervous anyway. Um, but I have that happen a lot. So go ahead and plan ahead and be thinking about that. Because the thing is, is if, if you fall in a sinkhole and you can't speak for yourself anymore, you know, now also if you have someone who's named your power of attorney, they can submit those legal documents and they can also talk on your behalf. But sometimes the person who is your power of attorney is not the boots on the ground person getting the work done. Mm -hmm. So I always, always suggest that. Um, then you're basically going to tell them you want to start a claim. This is where you were kind of asking some of those questions. Um, and you can call them. Almost all of them have so much information online about how to start the process. Um, like I said, I can't say it enough. I do it online. I do call them, um, but I submit everything online. There's no getting lost in the mail. As it is, most of these policies have a five to 15 business day window for things to be approved and submitted and whatever nonsense um so i have had where like i just said oh i saw it was approved on such and such a date so you know this is where it is um they'll likely ask for more paperwork more than once lots of paperwork once you kind of get into it into the groove once you get approved it gets a lot easier but the getting there can be kind of challenging they are not your friend. So the, some of the people who answer the phone are lovely. Um, but so the couple that I was talking about, we got him approved pretty easily, could not get her approved. People were supposed to call me back. They didn't call me back. But one day I literally called Jen Ward four times in one day because people weren't calling me back. And I had finally had enough. And I told the girl who answered the phone, I said, no, I need to speak to a supervisor, one of these three who was supposed to call me back earlier today. Oh, well, I can help you. And I was like, honey, you don't make enough money for what's about to come out of my mouth. So please get me a supervisor. <laughs> and she did. And what was funny, what was strange, and this is the worst case. I have had some that have gone really smoothly. Those aren't as much fun to talk about. Um, but basically they were like, oh no, she still has 12 elimination days yet left. And I was like, no. And I, we counted through everything. And the lady's like, no, we're still showing she has 12. I'm like, fine, fine. I'm going to jam out these 12 days. Two days later, they cut her a check for $3,000. I don't really know what happened. I don't really care what happened, but we got it to work. So that's why it's important to keep copies of everything. I keep a running tally for my clients. Like, almost like you do the little four little checks and a five of how many days. So I, and then I call the company and I'm like, I have that they only have four days left. What do you have? Mm -hmm. And then if I need to, I will go through each individual day. Again, worst case scenario, but these are the things you need to be aware of. And unfortunately, when you are a caregiver for someone, this is the worst time for you to have to be fighting these fights. Now, I will say, I'll go off on a little side here. Some of the agencies, the provider agencies, will do this for you. So I have a home care agency that I work with 
that they have it set up where they send all the paperwork to the, basically the client has signed off and said, don't reimburse me, reimburse them. So the caregiver actually submits all the paperwork and they get the payment from the long-term care insurance, which works really well because they want to get paid. And I have a couple of assisted livings that do that as well. The other nice thing about that is these are the people who have the care plan and the invoices and all the silly documentation that they need. Um, so you always ask when you start working with a provider, you're going to move into assisted living. I have a long-term care policy. Do you handle that? And usually the assisted livings, especially they get all excited. Oh, yeah, that means you have extra money. But what you want to ask them is, do you do the billing to the long-term care insurance or do I? And it doesn't really matter if you like the community. You just need to be prepared. But if they're doing the billing, if the money just goes directly to them. Yeah, and yeah. That's kind of you. Exactly. And that's if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. Um, but that is an option. Um, they're there to make money. If you get approved, that's less money in their pocket. And again, not the people who are answering the phone. They're just, you know, nine to fivers like everybody else. Um, you'll have to do a screening with their healthcare professional as well. So you're going to have all of your documents, um, but they're still going to have the company do an assessment. And it can be done via Zoom. Um, a lot of my companies use Care Scout is what it's called, and it's basically an LPN or a nurse. It's mm -hmm. similar to when you had an agency come out and the nurse came out to say, yes, you do need help. These are, this is what we're going to do to help you. Similar to that. It's just one more step in the process, so just be prepared. Is a Zoom meeting considered an elimination day? No. No. That's a good question, but it's not considered an elimination day. Um, you'll have forms that you have to fill out and send in. Again, do it online if you can. Keep copies of everything. Um, just see, or although like what I do is I scan stuff and then I load it. And then once I know that it's been loaded onto their site and I can see it, I don't worry about keeping the copies because it's there in their system. Um, so important facts, you have to meet two of the six assisted uh, activities of daily living. You have to have a chronic illness that you'll need assistance with for at least 90 days um, and or have a cognitive impairment. You're going to need a health professional. Again, that can be at a provider agency. That's usually where these things start. Something happens, your doctor says, hey, you look like you could use some help at the house. Um, and then you reach out to a home care agency and you kind of get started that way. Um, you'll have to be recertified monthly, more paperwork. Yay! Um, but usually once you get approved, it's fairly easy going. It's the getting there. Um, one of the things that I tell my, my clients is, so again, going back to the Medicare and having that therapy at home, you can, it's a particular form but you can basically reach out to the therapy company and say, hey, you know, so like what I did with this client was, hey, so-and-so has been getting therapy. Can you send me the Medicare billing? And that's how they count the days. Um, and the companies, again, usually know what you're looking for. It'll be, it was foreign to me. I had no idea. And they were like, oh yeah, you need the QMB3. And I was like, sure, yeah, but that is what I needed. Um, so a lot of times you can get that. And if you're doing it for someone else, as long as you have a release of information or a power of attorney, then like the therapy agencies and all those will help you with that. Um, okay. So mistakes to avoid. Don't wait too long. That is so important. Yes. Yes. And like I said, I have a friend who says they're holding your money for you and you want it back. Um, so yeah, don't wait too long to, to use it, use it, use as every little ring, every dollar you can out of that. Um, and then think about the cheapest way to meet your elimination days. Um, I think a lot of these are, we've kind of already talked about premium increases. I do want to talk about that. So you get those things every year or so that offers you different options. Mm -hmm. If it sounds too good to be true, it is, okay? But one of the things that I, I I have had one or two clients that I thought was really interesting, I usually always tell people, oh, don't change anything. You're going to lose money. And you can. But I have had a couple of clients who had, like there was one gentleman who ended up with like a half million dollar policy, but his he only had four years to use that. And I did the numbers and I was like, 
Well, you're, you know, even if you go into a nursing home, you're not going to use that much money in four years. So for him, it did make sense to go to a lesser thing. That's unusual. So you want to look at, so if, if you have a thing and the premium says, you know, this is your lifetime maximum benefit and you have four years to use it, do the math, figure a nursing home, which is the most expensive uh, service, maybe cost between nine and $10,000 a year. So if your policy is only good for four years, a month, I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, $10,000 a month. So if your policy, if your policy is only good for four years, you don't need more than $400,000 in that policy. But usually those options are not great options because if you read them carefully, and I'm always happy to help people, if you read them carefully, it will say, oh, but your daily maximum benefit is going to go back to the original. So that guy who now is getting $355, one of his options was to go back to $100 a day. And then he got $6,000. So you really have to look at it and you have to do the numbers. So you don't want to have too much money that you can't spend, but you want to have enough money. And then one of the other things I sometimes do is I look at how old is this policy? How much money have you put into this policy? And then does it make sense? Because like that $6,000 back was nothing compared to what the gentleman has paid. So you just have to be really careful. They're offering those things, not because they are trying to save you money, because they're trying to save themselves money. What about Buyouts. I mean, I, we've been offered like forty thousand dollars. Again, you have to do the math. Without seeing your policy, I can't answer that. Um, but again, who is this benefit? Then worth it. Of course, yes. yeah. yeah. Because they had a big law. They had a big lawsuit. That's a big piece of it. The other thing is, is Genworth sent out that letter. Oh, it made me so mad. That said, oh, your policy could increase one hundred and eighty percent. Not really. So there are state limits on how much you can increase over time. So because I went down a whole rabbit hole to do some some digging into this because I want to be sure I'm telling my clients the right thing. Um, chances of suddenly next year you having 180 percent increase is slim to none because there are rules and there's regulations. And then the, our state, it's done by each state. So our state has a cap. Um, that it's not going to be 180%. But they put that in there so people what are afraid. What is the cap in Georgia? Oh, I have it written down in my office, but I can't think of what it is. It's a certain percentage that can only go up. And so I kind of look at like, okay, my clients are mostly in their 70s and 80s. If it's over a 20 year span, they're not, not necessarily going to happen. But I can find that out. I just can't remember. Yeah. yeah. That's 20% per year because I just got a letter from Allianz. They're going to grow up forty percent in two years. Yeah, so they, they would have talked it all to me at once. They and and I will be really honest. From what I also learned, I think you're right. It's nothing near one hundred and eighty percent. But then it also depends on who the insurance commissioner is. So it is subject to change as the politician changes. Um, but like, I don't see any state allowing the company. I mean, all of their constituents would absolutely go bananas if they suddenly went up 180%. But anyway, so you just have to really look at that. You really have to kind of do the money um, and make decisions because it's going to be individual for everybody. Before that half million dollar guy, I would have said absolutely never change anything, but I was wrong. Um, make sure you're, if your spouse passes away that they know, and then this is, you know, usually the premiums are paid to you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? We'll go. We'll start with that. General question. Um, my employer offered a long term care policy a number of years ago, which I bought into. Uh -huh. My wife does not have one currently. We're in our 60s. Would it be wise? Maybe. So I um, actually have a client who just signed up for a long term care policy. As you get older, um, you're, you don't get the full great benefits. But so her husband is in a nursing home on Medicaid. She's having to pay a cost share. After they got everything settled, her son was like, well, what's your plan if something happens to you? So she's in her 70s and she did get a policy. Um, and it's not horribly expensive. I think she's paying, it's maybe a thousand dollars every year. It's a small policy, but it will pay something. So I do think it can be worth it. It's worth exploring. Um, 
because anything is better than nothing if you can afford the premiums. Um, no offense to the Genworth people, I would say away from Genworth. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, for a lot of y'all, it was, and you know, and they were great, but. Um, had such a good reputation. Exactly, and yeah. That's what I'm concerned about. Well, and you will get paid. I mean, the insurance commission is going to make sure, like they're not, because that, so that's kind of where Jen works. Oh, if we don't do this, wow, 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 we're going to, you know, we're, everyone's going to lose everything. The insurance commission in, as a whole isn't going to let that happen. Like they're not going to just let everybody suddenly lose everything from what I've read. Um, but yeah, Genworth and Genworth was really good and it is really good. They just made a bad gamble that now is costing them. But to answer your question, I think I, I wouldn't have said this before this particular client, but I, I'm kind of impressed with her policy. I do think it is worth if someone doesn't have a policy, it is worth exploring because even if you get like her policy, she did, I think, assisted living. She didn't do home care. She did assisted living and nursing home only. Um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, if, if her policy, I think pays, I don't know, $300, $200 a day for three years, you know, that's better than nothing. And she, she doesn't have a lot of options at this point. She also doesn't have a lot of finances. So it depends on, you know, do you own your house? She still has a mortgage, a lot of those different things. It's kind of a cost analysis. And just remember too, those are salespeople. So they're going to make it sound great, but you really have to do some digging. Okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. What, and then I'll get to you. What would be, uh, I don't, maybe you don't want to answer this, but your cost to mm -hmm. review a policy and tell us what you think about it. So um, if you're a client of our firm already, it's $250. If you're not, it's $400. And what I ask is that you bring in your most up-to-date policy. So call and get your most up-to-date policy. If it's a couple, it's $400 for both of you. I don't, I'm not going to charge you both separately. And you bring your policy in, and usually it takes me a little while to review them and go through them. And then we sit down, and I kind of like, I write up kind of like, these are the important things to know. And then I have kind of like just general questions, which is similar. This is the first time I've done this. So I've been doing this long-term care policies for a while. I've just never done a presentation. But it's a lot of this kind of thing. Certain quirky things about your policy, um, things to look out for, that kind of thing. I'm sorry, I skipped you. You had a question. Uh, I'm, I'm with Allianz Insurance. I mean, that's, that's my policy. Uh -huh. A lot of these companies are going out of the business. What's what's a possibility of that? And what and what do I have? They say we're not doing it. Uh, and I believe they're not actually writing any new policies. But... Yeah, a lot of them I think have gotten bought out. So like Genworth has has merged in with other people. Um, John Hancock has as well. Um, I honestly don't know. Is your company still, is that company still in existence? They're just not doing, a lot of people are not doing policies anymore because it's not financially beneficial to them. They're, they're in the business, but I don't believe that they're writing new long-term yeah, care yeah. policies. They, they have general insurance. Yeah. They, I think they still have to, they still will pay out. Okay. Um, and then, like I said, some of them, because my clients will bring me, their policies, like one was like from work through like General Motors or something. And like it bought, it got bought twice. So it took me a while to track down like who owns the current policy. Mm -hmm. But I have not yet, doesn't mean it hasn't happened. I have not yet had anyone who came in with a policy and we weren't able to get it started, regardless of where it started with. I, I just wanted to say, Genworth was very good when my, my husband was sick. Yeah. But I'm reading so much about it. That's why I'm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, there's the I his went through just fine. I had no problems with him. The hardest part of getting his policy started was tracking down some of the paperwork that I needed from the different agencies because he had had two different physical therapy agencies. But then I don't know what happened with her. And it can be as simple as whoever's entering it did it wrong. Um, but it was, it became quite nightmarish. Um, so yeah, it can be good. And once you get approved, it's pretty golden as long as you keep doing your paperwork. Did you have a question? I, did say, I think we started with Genworth, but I think they turned it over to Prudential. 
because now we're prudential, but I think yeah. I'm thinking way back. Yeah. That that's where we started with it with an employer. It's like mortgage companies, you know, you're getting sold and moved and yeah. from different I places. They, I think they sold policies. Yeah. So we will have the benefit of your songs, is that right? Yeah, I think so. I can certainly, I think they downloaded them. Um, one of the staff here, if not, I can, I can email it to them and, and they can send it to you and then you'll get to read all my funny little notes, <laughs> which I probably didn't read all of them. I'm always, I make myself notes down at the bottom and I'm always terrible about remembering to actually read them. I just get to talking. Um, any other questions? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> We get this slide. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I've never been on the other. Yeah, I've never been on the other end, but I have no problem getting you my slides. Sorry. We call out the sales company. Talk to the person. Yeah. And they say yeah, 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 yeah. It'd be best for them to. Okay, you say yeah, yeah, and everything. Send it to the right. Yes. So what I usually tell people is like, go ahead and call and say, I want that most updated policy. And while you're on the phone, say, hey, tell me what my daily maximum, is, well, all those kind of things. And then when they send you that policy, you can then say, okay, I'm getting all this in writing. And usually it'll come, your whole policy packet will come because those are like, those are the same for everybody. Um, and then there's usually a cover sheet and usually on there is somewhere it lists your daily benefits and stuff. But just remember what's true today may be different two years from now when you actually need this policy if you have a compound inflation compound. So for your service to help get benefits to to deal with the insurance company, what do you charge for that? Um that kind of depends. I think that's a, a, a meeting we have. So we would so the way our firm works is we do consultations. They're normally four hundred dollars if you say you met us here it's free. Our attorney usually wants to review any of our firm clients' uh, estate planning documents. If it's fine, she'll tell you it's fine, but she feels pretty responsible that if you are our client, we need to make sure your, um, you know, your will is executed properly. It's amazing how many ones we get that are not um, signed or notarized. So usually at that meeting, and then she'll, you know, and then if you're like, this is all that I want, she usually quotes the cost of how much it will be. So you go to the attorney first and then yeah you you just call we have a meeting together okay. um she she owns the firm and so she sets the prices for everything um so yeah that's kind of and then we do our firm is what be billing so usually like it would be you know for you to come in and review just the documents and then if you actually were starting a claim and need help with that that would be somewhat so different all the cost. Up, I, I don't know. We don't do hourly. We don't want to keep track of that. And we also don't want our clients to feel like looking at their clock while they're calling us. So it's a flat fee. And like you pretty much then have unlimited access to us. That's what you did. And do you have cards? I do. I have my cards over here and then some information about us as well. Um, anything else? Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I yeah so they get it. I get super into it. Instead of being ever better, they pay it out of our that's great. You can call your money. <laughs> There's a pot of money, okay? And it always goes up at least some. And they said, you know, just pay it out of there. It won't feel like you're writing money out of your debt, you know, your social security, your pension. 
because it's theirs. And you can't, you're not going to probably use it. Oh my God. Maybe it's an inheritance or, you know, you can't outlive it. So, hey, there. Yeah. They said, so, and that doesn't help them. I mean, so they said, just keep paying it. Keep paying it. Yeah. But, but I yeah. Think, and and it, it's not necessarily, it doesn't just happen like that. I don't know. And I don't know. It's how people are getting started. started. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. To get started, yeah, so that's the line here. But I don't think she's going to be at least you get your money back. I mean, like, you know, so if you then you put it in, you know, the value. Yeah, I don't know what it is. As long as our financial head says just keep paying it and pay it out of your interest that you make every year anyway. Then you don't act out of your pocket. That's you're never gonna be using that anyway. It sounds weird, but you know. Um, yeah. Her father and other both did like policies. Yeah. 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 And I really did help us a lot. And I paid for that. So, uh, so and, and you didn't really, it, it also yeah, that's usually an additional that, uh, where uh -huh. I had no yeah. idea. Yeah. That so, I don't see that at times going uh, into that. But I mean, that I didn't that see that. Yeah, and, they, and we did figure that out for the And that's why I did for her. You know, she was there at her, and she was there. Two years, mm -hmm. and it was like eight thousand a year. Oh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Because I thought, well, this is the point. I think that you kept on for about fifty days and that sort of thing. So most long-term care policies have the elimination period stated in days. And she was Most of them do. Because mine is, is your policy in there. You know what? I have all this correspondence. Oh, but the policy is not there. Um, but. So we kept thinking, well, work for Minus them. six weeks. But of course, that's okay. you're talking about. Which then would be for two days. Uh -huh. well, well, than 50. So but my agent told me to that, 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 okay, bear in mind, mind six weeks, that I could have that somebody that come in one day uh -huh. for six weeks, and I would have met my yeah. Yeah. Not Wow. Be that yeah. would make sure that was true. But it might be, it's crazy how different all the policies are. Well, this was the agent with Northwest. Yeah. yeah. Is Northwest yeah. a good company? I haven't ever dealt with them, I don't think. Jen Worth is, is really the only one that I'm challenged with. Because like, I have another client who's got Tom Hancock. I have no problems with that. Well, we just need where we used to live. We knew somebody who was financial. Yeah. Everybody really goes to that. That's a good way to get started. I would just, um, I would call. Them, and I would say, yeah, what is six weeks? You, ways, you know, is it six and visits? Is it well? That was, this was the yeah. Yeah. I know, but I would, C plus I would verify plus. because when you signed up yeah, to what you, where you are now, it may now be different definition. Mm -hmm. And she, yeah. I mean. So, and you just and don't want to be she acts like caught off guard. Yeah, and and operating under a false system. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and then like the gentleman in the back said, say, whatever they tell you, say, can I get that in writing? But mm -hmm. she's saying they get bought back yeah. more. Yeah, they yeah, it's really crazy how some of them, and you do, I do, like, I have to call the you know, company and be like, what does that mean? I also and think actually that mine does that have a maximum of that's awesome. In which but case, I use it as much as you can. Right. And but I'm, well, I may be wrong. Right. Right. And like I said, I don't know what's going to be. Something said, yeah. I don't know the policy. Or is it in one of the files that I have at home right now? You probably need an updated copy yeah. anyway. Yeah. Uh -huh. But yeah, I've only seen a few that do not have a lifetime no. um, definition. Mm -hmm. And like that one couple that I had. And um, 
they were getting ready to move into assisted oh, living. No, and I was like, if you, they didn't want to. And I was like, why? You have plenty oh, I, I and they have no end to it. Yeah, the and she's more frail than he is. Oh, he's totally an fine. And I was like, if you start using that. this policy, I bet you can say, I know, I know you're saying, you know, don't wait too long, but um, you have to meet the medical need. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. I mean, I wouldn't meet the medical need. Yeah. I do the work they frank and do yeah. Yeah. diabetes, but yeah. you know, yeah. and that's great. Right. So, but I mean, I, I think so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Once a week, three times a week, whatever, to meet an elimination period, because then the elimination is not, but I, I really just don't even because need that. I think you may be able to it's it. more the people that I see that are really struggling to yeah, fix meals and, you know, like yeah, changing the sheets on the bed. Say, it's really hard for them. Oh, yeah. And so what happens is they keep trying, keep, keep trying to do that on their own and then they fall and then they break something and, and then they have to go to a community whether they want to or not. Whereas I can't help but sometimes yeah. wonder if you had someone kind of, if you weren't struggling so much on your own, would we have been able to put off like quality healthy. because you would have had someone cooking you wouldn't have cooking and, and yeah yeah to so it's, it's those yeah, yeah exactly yeah. exactly it's those people so there's certainly a lot of people like you who don't have any care needs yet which is great um but if that is to change that's where people people are like no no i don't I, you know, it's, it's, and it's, it's a pride thing it's not wanting to acknowledge you know that maybe you're getting more, i understand all of that but yeah and i don't i don't think in my case no no but i'm saying there i see that a lot with other clients where they're like they're they're not quite ready to admit they need help and then they don't get help and then they get hurt and then now it's too late well, I've had you know, a few accidents lately. I've been thinking that I'm just an accident yeah. waiting, yeah. looking for a place to end. Yeah. And they, but they weren't age related yeah. accidents. Right. They were yeah. like one, you know, how sidewalks uh -huh. and, you know, one yeah. square can yeah. be that much yeah. higher than that. I was walking my dog and I was not looking at the ground. Yeah. But I just tripped over that, yeah. you know, where it was raised. Yeah slammed my oh, face into the yeah. concrete and had to I first went to urgent care but they said oh no you no, have no. to go to the well, ER and, you and know, you've got to go to the ER and have a cat scan and scan yeah. and um Medicare paid every bit you know, yeah for the ER for yeah the ER and yeah, yeah. The cat scan which was super expensive yeah but so many times like with office visits and what they reduce Medicare yeah. reduces it so much, they just accepted that, yeah. and it was a lot. Yeah. yeah. So those are not age-related accidents, but they have more of an impact on an aging person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I trip on the sidewalk too, but it's it's just less. It can be less devastating for a younger person. Person. Yeah. 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 Well, should you ever accept a buyout? It depends on you. Negotiate more for more. I got to, to call them and say, well, you can, if you give me this amount of money, I'll consider it. Thank you. This. Yeah, I don't know. You have to look at your policy. It all depends on what your policy is and what you have and whether it's going to benefit you. And, you know, like my um, uh, financial advisor would say, possibly if you're going to take that $40,000 and invest it, and make money off of it, then yes, possibly it would be worth it. But you need to look at what your like. I'm just looking at the care aspect. Like, what is it going to reduce your policy, your your care? You see, of a result. I I really think I I wish I had never gotten it. To be honest with you. Yeah. My wife wants my wife more or less thinks sees it as a security blanket almost. But you know, if you're selfish, I mean. For me, when I look at how much they, really it seems to be very well. Yeah. Like over, you know, really yeah. half a cent of that. I said, well, I could have saved all that money that we're paying you and probably had that much additional. I mean, like, it doesn't yeah. seem, it's, it's almost like they're paying, because you don't, they're pay paying a long game. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, it just depends. I mean, and then I have some clients like that. 
the couple that I kept talking about, yeah, they only have $150,000, but they wouldn't be able to stay at home without it. And that's what's most important to them. See, we would, we have, it's not that we had big jobs, but it was she inherited a, a, a pretty good stuff. Mm -hmm. And to me, that inheritance easily covered both of us yeah. with plenty left over without having to worry about that. Like, yeah. to me, it was self insured. Yeah. Yeah. I'm paying somebody extra money, and we really don't. It just, it, it, it seems like a lot up front. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of if we had to go in, oh God, would be paid six yeah. to eight thousand dollars for this. This, but you know, the, the amount of time you're probably going to be in there, yeah, all that. It's usually really like three years or less, yeah. But for a lot of people, really, what it comes down to is, you know, like, do they want this legacy to be available for their kids? Like, I don't have a long-term care policy. I think about it, but I don't have one. And I told my kids, like. I'm going to spend everything that I have. Mm -hmm. You are, you know, you set your own path. If I have something left, that's great. But if not, like, don't, don't be looking to me right. to leave you because, I mean, and then if I run out of money, I'll go to a nursing home and I'll die. Fine. <laughs> well, it, and, uh, it's, one of those, it's a tricky thing where you spend all that money, but then if you need it, I think a lot of people be really glad they have it because yeah. for some of my clients, it makes the difference between a subpar community and a nice, nice, a nice place because yeah. they have that you know, yeah. they have a certain amount they can pay each month, yeah. and then they make it. Well, that's what we did with the payback, we did yeah. it for them, but all it did was give us more money that they would use. Yeah, to pay for that. yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it just it's really such a beautiful story. Okay, you did a great job. Oh, I mean, thank you. Was that the first time you've done something? No, I've done it a lot. The first time I've done this presentation. No, I've been here before. Yeah, I've been here before. Yeah. 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 Yeah.